Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Owe Bapa and it is such a pleasure to have you watch this video. On today's video, I want to speak on four keys to effective prayers. You know, we've been praying as Christians every day. Someone would ask, what do you mean by effective prayer? The Bible in James chapter 5 verse 16, the second part of it says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So this speaks of the effectiveness of prayer. All through the Bible, we have people and children of God who, through praying, God has answered their prayers and brought about miracles and brought about help. You can see in Genesis where Abraham's servant prayed when he was sent to go look for a wife for Isaac. And he prayed to God to help him and give him good speed. God did that and answered the prayer and everything was made easy. So to have an effective prayer life is something that you as a believer should desire. So James chapter 5 says, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man doing tremendous works. As a believer, it behoves us to find out how can we make, how can we pray effectively so that we would not just take prayer as a routine to tick over our to-do list. Oh, I woke up, I woke up in the morning, I prayed. I wanted to go to bed, I prayed. We could just take prayer as an emotional thing to not feel bad. Something we do so that God will be happy with us. But at such point, it becomes a religious routine with no proper understanding or knowledge or effects or something that you know is impactful to us. So sometimes based on the denomination that we all come from, effective prayer could look different for everyone. Some people it could be like you know praying passionately and shouting to others. It could be something different. The first key to effective prayer is the relationship between the subject and the object of the prayer. The relationship between the person that prays and the one who receives the prayer. The relationship between the person that prays and who the person is praying to. So if you pray without knowing who is receiving your prayer, it could be that you are ignorant because you have to know who you are praying to and understand what is prayer itself. Prayer is not just a routine. Prayer is not just something we do as Christians. Prayer has meaning in our work with God. So prayer is a means of conversation or communication to God. An active means, not just a mundane thing or something we get to do and shout and yell and then maybe feel like, okay, we've done something, but not even knowing the impact of what we've done. So it's not just a religious stuff. And then for it to be done effectively, for you to be able to communicate with him effectively, for you to be able to hear him, because when he talks about communication, there has to be a to and fro, you know, conversation, which is I speak and I listen. I speak and someone listens, someone hears me, the person I'm speaking to hears me and then I get a reply. So for you to speak to God whether through asking of your request and get the reply, you need a working active relationship with the God you are praying to. And in that scripture it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. It does not say a definite article there, but a righteous man, which means any man that is righteous before God, such man can pray effectively because there is a relationship. There is a relationship that is created between this man and his God. The New International Version of that verse says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. So I could put it this way, that an effective prayer is a prayer of a righteous person. So the next question you would ask yourself is, who is a righteous person? Because if you don't get to know who a righteous person is, then you will not know how to become a righteous person. So righteous person, is not the same thing as a perfect person. So I want to make that clear. To be a righteous person is not equal to being a perfect person because no one is perfect except God. God is the only one that is perfect. But our righteousness is a position that is granted to us by means of Christ's sacrifice and finished work at the cross. The Bible in Second Corinthians chapter Corinthians 
chapter 5 verse 21 says, For he who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we who were sinners should become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the righteousness we have from God is a gift first and foremost. It is not something we work to get. It is not something that is based on what we do or what we do not do. It is based on what he did. He became sin. He substituted us, took our place, and now we receive his righteousness as a gift. And because we receive this, we are now in right standing with God, in right positioning with God for God's favor, for God's goodness to abound towards us. As in Romans chapter 5, verse 19, that says, To them who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they shall reign in life through Christ. So an effective prayer is a prayer made by a righteous man who knows and recognizes his righteous identity in Christ Jesus. Such a person, when he prays, God does great things through such prayers. The second key to effective prayer is the motive of the heart of the person who prays. Your motive as a person who prays is so important to your prayer, to the prayer that you make. God sees your heart, he knows your motive and intents. People could possibly pray for so many reasons and some could just pray, like I said earlier, as a routine or as something to not make them feel bad. So when they get to pray, they feel good. And then it might just stop there and they don't get to, you know, go into a deeper fellowship where they realize the impact of praying. To pray effectively, your motive is of great importance. If you have a motive to pray to God to get something to happen in your life for you to use that to smear on people, God won't do it because it reads your heart. If you have a motive for God to bless you so that you will use that blessing to boast, God will not bless you because God wants you to honor him. He cannot. He said, my glory I will not give to another. A prayer that brings reverence to God and is submitted to God's will too. And the third is with humility of the heart. Such prayer is effective because if it will bring glory and honor to God and which is if you need healing in your body, does it agree with the will of God? Yes, it does. The scripture says by his stripes, you are healed. So you can pray and receive that healing because it will reverence God. It will re make God revered. It is submitted to his will and then it will humble you. It's with humility of heart to you because you do not deserve it. It is a gift of his grace. So whatever you need, your motive is important. Whether it's a blessing, will it bring honor to God? Now let me point a story in Daniel chapter 2. When the king Nebuchadnezzar wanted to kill all the wise men with Daniel and his friends, Daniel asked for some time to go to his God. Daniel wasn't doing that so that when he comes out and his God replies him or God answers him, he will come and flex like I'm a prayer warrior. Or you come and flex to the king. No, it was to honor God. So he went with his friends and he prayed to God and with humility of heart submitted to his will that God would spare their life. And God answered the prayer. Note that when God answered the prayer, it brought great honor to the name of God. So at that point, so many things, it brought great honor and reverence to God's name. It was submitted to his will and it was done with great humility of heart by Daniel. Daniel was so humble, he blessed the God of heaven. He blessed God knowing that that didn't come from him, he came from God. That didn't come from his efforts to pray, he came from God's mercy because his prayer was for him and his friends to go and beg God for mercy, for God to have mercy on them. A prayer is not a transactional process to get God to do what he wants. A prayer is a relational process for you to get to know God's heart and know what he wants and then collaborate with him for what he wants to do in your life and on the earth to come to pass, which the scripture says, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which is you can put it to yourself, let your will be done in my heart, in my life 
as you had planned for me. So when your motive is to see God's will manifested, like when Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he did not put his will over God's will. He said, Lord, I would like this cup to pass me by, but not as I will. Your will be done. So your motive and your heart, the intent of your heart, should be God's will above yours. Such prayer is an effective prayer. Anything less than that is not an effective prayer. The third key, faith makes prayer effective. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith pleases God and faith is not feelings. Faith is not based on what you feel. So for a prayer to be effective, it's not about what you feel. It's not about the prayer point palpitating in your senses or making sense to you. It's not about the prayer points looking powerful or sounding powerful. It's about your faith that is connected to the word of God. Faith is not based on what you feel. Faith is based on what God says. As the scripture says that faith comes through hearing and hearing of the word of Christ. It's not through your thoughts or your feelings. It is based on the word of God. What is written in the word? What has God's word said? In Mark chapter 5, you see a woman with the issue of blood. Her story speaks of faith. And at the end of the story, Jesus told her, your faith has made you well. Let's go into the story. Let's read that story in Mark chapter 5. Mark 5 verse 27 to 28. When she heard about Jesus, notice that she heard about Jesus. That brings faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. She heard about Jesus. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, she heard and she said, that is faith. For we believe and we speak. She heard something which made her believe that she can receive healing by touching. So she heard and believed. This is a process in that woman's heart. When she heard about Jesus, she made up her mind and she said to herself, if I touch his garment, I will be made whole. That was faith on her part because she heard about Jesus and she believed. Mark this that it was against the Jewish law for her with an issue of blood to be out there. So she was taking a risk and for her to take such a risk, it meant that she had believed that she would receive her healing. She had believed in Jesus that he can heal her. So faith makes prayer effective. Faith believes that God is, that God exists, and that God hears prayers, and that God answers prayers. Faith believes that God is in existence. Faith believes that God loves you and me. Faith in your heart, in God's word, that he loves you, will make you approach him. When he says, come to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and grace, you can Go there boldly as he has commanded or as he has obliged you to. She said in her heart, if I may just touch his garment, I'll be made clean. And he said to her, verse 34, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now, this whole story is wrapped up in faith. The woman heard about Jesus, said to herself, if I touch, I'll be made whole. She believed in the efficacy of the power of Jesus that can heal her because she's heard about Jesus of how he's healed so many people and let me make this point nobody that Jesus healed when he was on earth was perfect or sinless because that time he did not die so they were all weak people who were sinful but the only thing that distinguished them from others that did not receive from him was because they believed in his power they believed that he was able and they believed that he was willing to so if you have faith in God when you pray, faith makes prayer effective. A prayer of faith is an effective prayer. And then all these points line up with each other. A prayer of faith by a righteous man whose motive is to honor God, is to seek the will of God. Such prayer is so powerful, it does tremendous things. So faith is the hand that takes from God. It is the hand that appropriates the blessings of God. The fourth key to effective prayer is that effective prayer is not about the act, a city, but the heart. So your heart matters to God. The heart with which you pray to God matters. And sometimes we are so caught up 
or let me say some people are so caught up with just the idea of praying and the love, the idea of praying, the idea of just performing in prayers, the, the drama of it and the very act of just having to pray. So most people could be caught up with that. But with God, it's about the heart, not just so much about the physical acrobatics and all the lifting hands and those are, if you do them, nothing is wrong with that. But that is not what connects with God. That is what you do to express yourself. There should be an expression that comes from your heart first before it flows out like that. So, but if you do that, if you, if yours is, you have to sweat it all out. Okay. Maybe you want to compare with Jesus when he was in the garden of Gethsemane because what he felt was so much that he had to sweat blood. If that's, if you, if you feel you need to sweat like that, it's okay. But what I'm saying here is about the heart. Because you see in James chapter 5 verse 17, where Elijah said, there shall be no rain. The Bible says in that James that Elijah prayed fervently. But when we check, if you want to put in parallel the first Kings 17 verse 1, it was Elijah saying, as the Lord God lives, there shall be no rain. He said that to her and it was as simple as that. But that's what the Bible calls fervent. He prayed fervently. So now correlate this. And then ask yourself, what is fervent prayer then? Fervent prayer is about the heart that believes God, that God can do whatsoever He says He will do. Like Ephesians 3 says, our God is able to do exceedingly more than we can ever ask or think. So God is able to do everything we can ever ask of Him. What I'm trying to say is the heart of faith that you have is what makes your prayer effective. Not the act, but your heart. It could look like the third point, which talks about faith makes prayer effective. But now your heart has to come in. It must have meaning. You must understand the meaning, which is through your heart. Man believes through the heart for salvation. You believe with your heart. So you get to believe the word of God by faith through your heart. Your heart is so important to your faith. So at this point, it is through your heart that you have a knowledge of the word of God. That you have the knowledge of what God has said. So you need your heart for faith to grow in. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video has been a blessing. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs. Give this video a thumbs up to help other people see it. Share the video to people and then see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.